This colonel, uh, the one who was hanged, did you know him? If you mean did I see him alive, yes. But I did not know him. His name was? Lely. His service name. A nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. A bad sign if there ever was one. Uh, tell me about the others first. One is a man. Corty, they call him. A nickname as well. The other a woman. Phyllis de Paul. Corty is the gunner, I believe. De Paul is a radio operator. Okay. What would you say was his eye color? The deceased. She closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face, then shakes her head. I can't remember. There's a pang of regret in her voice. The lieutenant was testing her. Asking a small detail first to see if she knew him better than she let on. She passed. That's all right, ma'am. Anything else? Nationality? What would you say was his age? He was 40. Or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. It made it difficult to estimate his age. Or gauge his spatial expressions. Indeed. This matches the dental reconstruction we saw on the body. What else? Nationality? Accent? He was, uh, Occidental, I think. Light brown hair, a mixed accent, Oranese, or Messinian, maybe. His injury gave him an accent all his own. In a way, it was humanizing. He had to learn to speak through it, through the injury. That's all I know, I guess. I only met him once. Uh, where are the remaining two mercs now? They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. For one, they're almost certainly armed to the teeth. They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens' militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes. Ghetto savages. It will not be a fruitful meeting. Uh, we still need to know where they are. Um... You're likely to run into them eventually. When that happens, I'll be in a better position to mediate if I don't appear involved. Okay, logic. 97% uh, chance. Where are these mercenaries? One is obviously the scab leader at the harbor gates. The one chanting the idiotic slogans. He's barely maintaining his disguise. True. The other has a vantage point in a building south of the roundabout. They were keeping tabs on you while you were canvassing the Lorange Islands. One must be the goon in ill-fitting work clothes by the harbour gate. The scab leader? That may be so. I still hope you heed my advice. There's no need to kick the hornet's nest. For all your talk of averting this catastrophe, the situation at the gate is a border keg. Does this not bother you? Of course it bothers me, Lieutenant. But my hands are tied. How would my employer react if it appeared I were intervening on behalf of the Union? Your concern may be appearances. Ours is keeping the peace. One is probably in a building overlooking the roundabout. That would afford a good vantage point. In any case, it's practically inaccessible. Where is your radio for contacting them, if I may ask? Do you have an earpiece? Heavens no. I'm not an undercover agent. There's a short wave at the ship's wheel. Uh, she nods towards the sloop's cabin. I had another question for you. I hope I can answer it better. Um, how much time do we have? Until the executions start. Truthfully, I don't know. It depends on their progress identifying the members of the lynch mob and their impatience. They don't report their progress to you? Not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. There is a brief silence. Seagulls squawk over the bay. It's a matter of days, not weeks. Okay, that's enough for now. I'm sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. If there is anything else I can help you with, please ask. Uh, now can you tell me about these tattoos that show the photo? Of course. Excuse my hesitation before. She uh, reaches over the guard wire and takes the photo, holds it in her hands. For about half a minute, in silence, 
She wears fingerless gloves. Her fingernails are cut short and fractured, like those of a working woman. It was taken with a trigger not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Let's stay quiet and observe her, dis uh, her expression. Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. What do you think? Uh, sorry. I was trying to see if I can read the web of interdependencies between these points. The stars. She points to one of the uh, to one on the photo paper. I can't. But that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body, and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Like blooms in a pattern? Close. Port cities. This is an Oranese map of the waterways. A sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the Dolorian century. Over 300 years ago, the sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. Uh, what is the use of this map? The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home if they should die abroad. This is a sort of contraption to be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. Uh, what travels did the dead man make? Quite a few. Vredefort, the Oranese capital, traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. What next? Then he made his way to the Pretto Grangi, through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Pretto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, first the Semenese Islands, then this. She points to the heart. What is that? Revachol. Those are the two constants. Vredefort on the shoulder, and Revachol in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the Interislary Age. The old, old world passing by, and the new, new world already here. You said you can't read it. I can't. This man was no sailor, and these are no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. In Martinez, looking into Grenell. He writes in one. Then the man puts down his pen and rubs his temples with both hands. Outside, there is a siren. Distant gunshots on the streets of the Jamrock Quarter. Vredefort? Vredefort has a military academy. The Seminese Islands saw a recent conflict. In Revachol, he was executed. Um, this man is no brother of mine, but this is his service history. Um, maybe it's a record of his military career. Let's go with the first one. That makes sense to me. We have no more use for a map of the waterways, just like we don't need sailors the way we used to. This is what the custom would morph into on the Occident. Mercenary tattoos. For all the boys looking for an adventure, a blood spatter on the seas. Uh, who could tell me more? His platoon members? The other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go and show them that picture. This man was their friend and comrade. Surely there are other people to ask about the tattoo. This is not necessary to complete the task, officer. It's a dangerous side task. Search elsewhere. Uh, you're right. Not a good idea. Let's leave it off the schedule. I am relieved you think so. I don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security. That's all for the tattoos. Uh, thank you for your help. Is there anything else I can help you with? Let's ask about reality another time. We've already talked to her for quite a bit, so uh, thank you. That's all for now. Let's look into here. I just... look. Sorry, okay? I know it's a bit of a waste because conceptualization is already very good. But I want to. And... Now let's head to that wall again. I want to find out what it is. I, oh my god, the game is has been. Oh, what's here? What's here? As a coat, uh, signal blue naval coat plus one suggestion minus one half light. Let's take it. How did I miss that? Okay, now let's see. 
with our increased um, conceptualization. Nothing to see here. Okay, 42%. It's getting better and better. Let's give it another shot. Cross our fingers and... Yeah. <sighs> Why? It's a war. An ordinary war. Why must we stop to look at this wall every time we pass by? We have business to attend to. Because I want to figure it out. Because I need to figure it out. Okay, so... It's gonna be half an hour until the smoker is back. Let's see what else we can do in the meantime. Uh, let's let's head inside for a bit. Ah, there's the door. Right, so here's the uh, thingamajig. Let's crack it open. This with... orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Okay, we have to equip it, of course. Um, let's go to the uh, items. No, tools. There it is. There's the uh, Kvalsund KR plus 2 multi-tool. Let's equip that. Oh, wow, that thing is massive. Yeah, let's hope that's enough to crank that boy open. This orange machine is buzzing yes. like an old... Still 8%. Ice groans and howls under the strain of your giant Kvalsund multi-tool. Until the lid cracks open, blue electric lights come to life. Wow, so 8% and we just rolled a uh, natural 12 and uh, cracked it open. Um, thank you, RNG gods. Thank you very much. Inside, on a frosty platform, lies an object, intricate and foreign, left there for a sub-zero beauty sleep. A filament of memory with the words, off-site copy written on its side. Disappointment washes over you as you stare into the almost empty ice cream maker. What? No ice cream? A scoop of ice cream would have been nice, yes. The lieutenant agrees. Someone's stomach grumbles. The room feels very cold. Let's take the filament memory. You gently lift the cube from its frosty bedding. Careful not to damage it. Okay. We should take it back to Miss Lucan and Kilda as soon as possible. I'm not sure how well unused filaments tolerate room temperatures. Yes, but aren't you curious to know what's on the precious filament? There's a radio computer upstairs. Um, I think it's probably smarter to hand it to her, because if we destroy it, then she's going to be real mad and the whole deal is going to fall through, I suppose. Let's quickly head upstairs, though, to the... Um, What's this? And it's dark in here. I should equip the uh, flashlight now. Oh, I have the bottle in my hand. Uh, items. No, oh, tools, right? Yeah, that's the flashlight. Let's equip that so we can actually see something. Oh, yeah, right. That's that. I'm not going to use it here. It's probably not going to go well. Let's instead head here and see. As before, an iron safety curtain curves before your eyes. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. This is directly above the central furnace in the cellar. The voices probably came from here. Okay, hello, Ayal, but, uh, but it didn't work. Again, your voice becomes a raspy croak mid-sentence. It's silent in the abandoned office building. No one answers you. Sire, may we suggest something? Think of the yelling into the furnace as a... Grand performance. Use your chest voice, not your head voice. Sing from the diaphragm. Um, Perhaps it's not such a bad idea. I thought I might be able to use that. Maybe we have to uh, actually be allowed to use it by um, by that lady in, uh, uh, that wants the computer thing. Maybe we could give the bird thing to... to um, God, you know what? I don't need to carry the bird around all the time. Let's see. God, Can I help you. Um, God, I found a new bird for the whirling. Let's give him the rough grouse. What is this thing? It's no biggie. I just thought it would look nice on the wall. I'm that kind of cop. What? The interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. 
A competent piece of taxidermy. You're welcome. I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm gonna go with thank you. That's fine. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. It's not actually about that, but he liked it. Okay, um, I'm not gonna pay my bill for tonight because I sleep somewhere else now. Goodbye. And have a nice day. Oh yeah, you. We could talk to you. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. Um, I ran into your husband on the coast. Goodness. How is he? Did he say why he hasn't returned yet? The old woman clasps her hands together over her blanket. He's fine, ma'am. As we had suspected, he couldn't get back earlier because the water lock on the canal was broken. Now he's just finishing up somewhere. Oh, yes. That's my morel. He's bound to catch a cold staying out there for so long. But I am so relieved to hear that he's okay. Thank you for putting an old woman's heart at ease, if even a little. You haven't, however. There are dangers out there. Our aging bodies fail. Her heart won't rest until Morel is safely back with her. Now maybe she'll open up about those fascinating cryptids. Take her mind off all this. Uh, you never told me you've seen the Phasmid. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. No, I really want to know. Reflexively, the lieutenant read his, his familiar notebook. Well, it was summer. I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. Quite a tall one. Many times my height, I remember. When, all of a sudden... Wait, uh, where was this and how old were you? Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was five and a half in Betancourt in the suburbs. My grandmother had a summer home there. Beton Court got bombed in the war. It used to be quite near, circa 20 kilometers from here. And what happened? The strangest moment of my life. I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. Did you follow it? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee deep in mud, looking around me. I mean, that's good. I think it's actually not that uncommon that people get lost in the reeds and, and actually drown. So I think it's smarter to stay out of there. Uh, then what? I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> of course, she just laughed at me, but... I knew what I'd seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys. That sort of thing. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on our first date when I told him my story. You should have seen his face. He said my descriptions match the phasmid down to a T. It's white marble limbs, the way it moved. Uh, you were on a date. Uh, it's limbs are white. How big was it? Okay, you were on a date. Our first. Yes. The old woman sighs tenderly. It's limbs are white. Not all of them, as far as I remember. Some of them on the inside like stalks of marble, if that makes sense. How big was it? It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small yourself. <clears throat> to me, it seemed to be taller than I was then, but that's probably not the case. Uh, maybe you imagined it. Um, Kim, what do you think of this? Uh, maybe you imagined it. Let's just ask. She's going to have a comeback to that. I'm sure of it. 
Of course. I thought about it. But Morel says my report matches with the others. And I'm sure I hadn't heard of the Phasmid as a child. Nor had my mother or my grandmother. So how did I know what to imagine? It was only when I started telling my story as a teenager that boys would tell me, Lena. She, lower, she lowers her voice imitating a boy. You trying to tell us you saw the Insul Indian Phasmid out there in those reeds? Get out of here. <laughs> they just give me a cider and ruffle my hair and tell me to stop dreaming. But I saw it. Kim, what do you think of this? I thought it was a wonderful story, man. He closes his notes and gives her a simple smile. But I don't believe it. A child left unattended on a warm day. Children make up stories and then end up believing them. Plus, memories can change just by having things told to you. Like, the memory of the white legs probably only showed up after the description or something like that. Like, memories are extremely malleable. Uh, thank you for sharing this with me. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it whenever I get one. It was just... Such an impossibly sunshiny day. So warm. Okay, um, I'm gonna do that later. Let's talk to the Hardy Boys for now. Um, also, we've got a skill point, so um, that's all for now, man. Now, of course, the top meme would be putting that into conceptualization again and running to the wall once more, but I'm actually not gonna do that. I'm gonna uh, do maybe physical instrument now yeah I think I'll do that could be useful like cracking things open with a tool that 8% roll was very very lucky just now so I think increasing that cannot uh, cannot be bad for us right let's let's do that real quick there we go um, and two of them are all colored in and the, uh, the the ones above are just not colored in because they're very high level anyways. Okay. Let's accept changes and close. Wonderful stuff. Now, okay, we can quickly change the items we have equipped because this is getting ridiculous. We don't need the Qualsund. And um, we could, what could we use? Um, let's get the crowbar back. Yeah, I think that's less uh, bulky and in our face. Unbelievable. What's so unbelievable, huh? I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Are you a hardy girl? I am not. You could be lazy. You could be anything. You could even be a mod. Even a mod? Glenn, I went to law school. I am an attorney. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of the Debutante International. Uh, let's not get involved in that. I mean, yeah. Uh, or should we say that I uh, got a grip she went to law school? Um, okay, sure. So fucking what? Lots of models are actually really smart people, fuckwad. I mean, that's true. True, you got me there. No, Glenn. They aren't. I mean, some of them are. This didn't change her opinion of you. And that's fine. It's not her. She's not a hardy girl. Definitely. Why are you so aggressive? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Just dock workers? Do dock workers spy on the police? We'll let you off easy, miss. Don't think it will happen again. We've talked to Everard Claire. We know who these men are. The Union's militant wing. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. The tall, broad-shouldered man takes a sip of his beer. So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. The world needs a financial buffer zone, no need to get emotional. Uh, 
The privatization is not unlawful. It's cool and funny. Maybe you just uh, you're just not historic individuals. Um, I don't know where you heard that, but it's wrong. The RCM is principled and strong, and like you, socialists. I like that. Good start. Uh, let's take it a step further. Armed uprising. Uh, what are the union's plans? Um, sure, let's ask that. Look, a comedian. Do your job. Ask your questions. Then get out of Martinez. Strange. It's as if people don't believe a cop could be a socialist revolutionary. Uh, maybe we'll talk later. Look, the insane police officer is back. He takes a sip of his beer. The small man mimes, blowing his brains out. You see his rat face contorted in mock despair. His fingers touching his temple. There's laughter in the room. Try not to kill yourself this time. Um, guess what? I've connected you to the local drug, uh, drug trade. I talked to Joyce, uh, the merc you hanged. His friends are coming for you. Um, let's go with that one first. Yeah, by friends. You mean his squad mates from Cronell. Wouldn't want to beat up his grandma. Uh, there's snickering in the room. Some of the men put their beers down. Yes, they are forming some kind of tribunal and they're coming for you. This is what happens if you take the law into your own hands. Other people start doing it too. Let them come. The Hardy boys are right fucking here. You heard the man. Right here. We're armed. We got the whole district behind us. And Glenn. Glenn is fucking crazy. Yeah. I will oil it for the machine. Uh, he punches Blondie on the shoulder. The mood is on the rise. They're feeling confident. Ready to punch out the whole Merc platoon. Um, the mercenaries are armed with automatic weapons. We got weapons of our own. We got Ister 50s, Zilagars. Glenn's got a knock cannon at home. Uh, will they pierce uh, ceramic armor? I guess we're gonna see. Aren't we? That was an unsure phrasing. See what? That they don't? Yeah. Like you've been up against ceramic armor. He takes a sip of uh he takes a sip of beer to bide his time, then tries to get the last word in. You haven't even seen the whole suit, right? I've seen the whole fucking thing, and it didn't make him immortal. Uh this Krenel is bad news, you know that, right? <laughs> So are the local gangs, the fucking Barmy army, and the Madre scum. You've been out there. Seen any around? Yeah. Where are they now, huh? Send back to Madre in an airtight cargo crate. These people are trained military professionals. Special forces, as you said. They're not a gang or Barmy army. No, they're not. They're uncoordinated and drunk. We know more about them than you think. Um, Choice says they've gone rogue. Nobody is controlling them. Big fucking surprise. They hire psycho scum, arm them to the teeth and let them loose in the city. What do you think is gonna happen? Um, do you know that a single uh, Ceres giant hornet can kill 40 bees a minute? The fuck is that supposed to mean? You're the bees, they're the hornet. We're not bees, we're men. We're socialists. And bees are highly social? Or, oh, like, they have this whole hive structure, so I guess. Easy, E. He's trying to phase you. What are you trying to do? Scare my men? Okay, conclude with a shrug. What do you mean, okay? I mean, okay, they're going to wipe you the fuck out, Titus. I mean, okay, you got this, you got the numbers. I mean, okay, I'll be on your side when they come. I mean, okay, you got one more gun on your side. Once I find mine, I lost it. I mean, okay, I guess I'll be gunning you down right alongside them. Um, uh, we're not gonna get anywhere by saying we're gonna just stand on their side. 
Uh, okay, they're gonna wipe you the fuck out, Titus. Sure. No, they won't. Get out of here with your negative energy. All he means is that the situation is serious. No wonder you cops get shot to shit every day. Can't go to war with an attitude like that. Guess what? I've connected you to the local drug trade. Like hell you have. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how clean your streets are in Precinct 41 Kilo. We'll do that. In the meantime, did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock? The person driving it was present at the hanging. It was one of you. We've connected the footprint. Detective, do you want to deliver the coup de grace? The thought forms in your head, like a lightning strike branching in the sky. Um... No, do the honors, you've earned it. Um... Sure. Thank you. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade, because it's all controlled by you. You're the drug trade. That's a mighty interesting theory. I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. Yeah, man. Theoretically, that's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place, of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. For the good of the community, of course. Uh, this is disgusting. You're admitting to profiting off of poisoning your own people. Good idea. People are always going to do drugs. At least this way you have some control over it. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. I know for a fact there's still plenty of drugs out there. Um, there's still plenty of drugs out there. In fact, I've got some in my bloodstream right now. <laughs> um... Hmm... There's still plenty of drugs out there. No, there aren't. Some little shit and his dad are doing speed. Who fucking who? The stuff's probably from Jamrock. Little shit. That's Kuno in the yard. True. Whatever you've seen is peanuts. Look at the big picture, man. The place is a paradise. And all thanks to Hardy Boys. Theoretically, of course. We're just talking politics here. My answer to your drug accusation is... How dare you? Go fuck yourself! Not quite yet, Mr. Hardy. There were eight sets of prints on the crime scene. There are only seven Hardy boys here. The eighth Hardy, the one who's missing, she runs the thing, right? My answer is... Fuck off. Mind your own business. There is no eighth Hardy. I run this goddamn scene. And here we go. Back to the usual. The woman sighs. I know, I know. Fatty walked on all fours. He's so fucking fat he left two sets of footprints. <laughs> Despite everything, the little man is quick on his feet. Go fuck your mom, Dennis. That's more like it, boys. You heard him. It was Angus on all fours. Anything else you need to know? I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> I've pushed my luck enough with the 8% uh, check that I succeeded. I'm not gonna try another. We might do that later, but... Um, 